When a hacker compromises a computer, what they do next really tends to vary, but it's likely that they're going to end up using some living off the land techniques or using tools, utilities, and programs and applications that are already on the target on the victim operating system and computer to do what they might then further do. For the Windows operating system, a lot of these living off the land binaries, scripts, libraries, other techniques, tricks, and tips you could end up using are publicly available. They're online and documented in this low bass github repository and a web page to be able to look through them and of course if you're looking for linux tips and tricks and techniques you can use the gtfo bins or lol drivers if you're looking at drivers and how they might be used for this purpose there are a ton of these if you haven't seen them before but what i want to focus on in this video is winget and winget's a little bit new hey brought to life in recent modern windows operating systems i see it in windows 10 also see it on windows 11 and it is inherent native installed by default in those modern operating systems. It is the Windows Package Manager tool, a lot like Chocolatey, but now actually official and formal and built into the operating system. It parallels a lot like Yum or Apt or Aptitude or any of the repository package managers that you might see on the Linux world. And you use it to install genuine software, like real official programs and applications that you want to use. But in this case, hey, it can be used to just install and execute code from any other remote location. If you tweak it and play with it a little bit, you could actually download a file from any other web address that you might specify in a custom YAML manifest configuration file. It'll execute it, it'll just run it. And for this reason, it's one of those interesting things that could be used for offensive tooling or hacking, red teaming, penetration testing, yada, yada, yada. So there already is a lot of really cool research and intel and articles and blogs and write-ups all about this sort of thing. Hey, credit where credit is due. This article is from Saul Panders. This is way back at the very start of 2022, so a little bit dated, right? But taking a look at Winget as a low bin or low bass technique, but they note, look, it might just be kind of mostly useless. It has a couple couple little idiosyncrasies and things that make a little bit of hesitation and genuinely using this, but you might have some creativity to still use it for your own purposes if you are a, I don't know, penetration tester, red teamer, etc. The gimmick here is that, look, Winget supports all of these other installation types, EXE, MSI, MSIX, Apex, blah, blah, blah. But the thing is, it looks legitimate, like it is a, a real genuine Windows utility. And if you're on a developer system, maybe you landed in some programmer employee or an engineer's box, you could still end up using this and blend in. So hey, that's enough talk. Let's go ahead and play with it. I'll fire it up with the Windows terminal. Uh, just hit the run dialog box with the Windows super key and R and then WT is the command to run it. Now I can just run Winget. And if I actually just display all the help information, you can see what it might be able to do. Install things, show information about packages, source, maybe you're managing sources or the repositories that you pull things down from, search for list, upgrade, install, blah, 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 and other options to just kind of check out the version of the application or get some more information about the tool, you can use TAC -TAC Info. Now that is actually pretty worthwhile because if you end up using uh, wget -TAC -TAC Info, you can see the logs location as to where it stores all of the information that it might be tracking as it does what it does. It's logs, right? You could actually go see there is an environment variable here for local app data, packages, Microsoft desktop app, etc., etc. It's a long path, but if we copy that, we could fire up Explorer and why don't I navigate to that location? I'll just paste it in and you can see, hey, there are a couple invocations for me running Winget just now. Let's go see, I don't know, fire up one of these. Hey, it just sees Winget being ran without any other arguments or applications to it, right? There's no other flags or parameters that we passed in. That was just trying to get the usage of the application. And then of course, as we just ran tac, -TAC info, that's displayed there. This could be useful and worthwhile because it is logging as to what applications it might've pulled down for whatever forensics, blue team, DFIR stuff that you could be threat hunting for. Uh, note though, that you could end up actually setting on verbose logging that enables verbose logging for Winget. Uh, I'm curious if that's going to be a set and forget if you run that, uh, or we need to make a change in the settings.json file, because there is a user's a user settings location that we could modify and add to if you want to check out the Microsoft documentation for that. Let me try to run winget with tac, -tac verbose logging. Oh, it's tac, tac verbose logs, forgive me. 
Yeah, that needs something done. So that needs a command. That is not set for everything that you end up doing. We can try to manipulate the settings here though. I don't know if that will display it. Okay, cool. Looks like notepad or any other text editor will try to open up. We can always have that opened here. And that is the settings.json file that I assume is in the location directory that it put in. At least that path that we saw in the tac tac info command. It does give us a link here for some more documentation and info. So we can go take a look at that. Looks like this is in a GitHub repository and it notes a couple of things here. You could change the source settings. You could change visual progress bars. That's kind of neat. Uh, I'm interested more in logging. There are a couple others that you might be able to dig into here, but ooh, here's a worthwhile one. Logging level could showcase just about everything if you wanted to. And verbose is what we'll end up using. However, if you use the tac tac verbose logs command line argument, it does what it does. So let me copy and paste that in here. I'll try and save this and uh, we'll see if this comes through. If I close out of this now, what else can we do? Okay, so if we wanted to try and install things just kind of quick and easy from a local like user controlled location like that we can manipulate you probably will have to create your own manifest.yml file now you'll need to do that and actually have Windows and WinGet trust those locally defined manifest files you will need to change the settings so that this is actually allowed to happen this is again modifying those settings, so I'm curious if we run this command, when we enable this, what will that settings.json file look like? We can go ahead and try that out. Let me get back to my terminal, paste this in, and run it. And ooh, that does of course require admin privileges to execute. So let me close out of this shell. I'll open up another one with control shift enter UAC prompt will let me through. And now we can see if I paste that in, do we have any success. Uh, interesting. It probably had a mistake or error while I was trying to work with the settings.json file. So maybe it didn't like uh, the list option that I gave it there. Let me see if winget settings will bring that up properly. Yeah, things are broken here. Doesn't like logging. Makes sense. Let's just set this to only be verbose so we don't have a full uh, list there. And I don't think that needs a comma. So now, because that didn't actually take effect of the other one, seemingly it just gave that success message even though there was an error. Uh, so how about that? That seems to work. Now, what does our settings look like? Doesn't actually showcase it in settings.json. That's kind of interesting. We can uh, touch on that again in just a moment. But anyway, we are set up now to be able to work with local manifest files and we can configure something that we could install or execute and run, right? Actually use the functionality of this low bin, even though we've had to run into a couple speed bumps because you will require admin privileges to actually turn on that functionality of local manifest files. If you put together your own manifest file, here's some example syntax. Here's what all the uh, necessary keys and values, not strictly values, you can obviously change that while you're writing this. And we can build out our own test proof of concept. Hey, before we start the fireworks and light this thing off, please let me give a quick shout out and some love to today's sponsor, PlexTrack. When you're performing a penetration test, you're in the zone. You're hacking away and you're having fun, gathering findings, beating up vulnerabilities and earning domain admin. But you might be dreading the work that comes after. You have to write a report. But writing a pen test report doesn't have to be dull and boring and long and tedious. In fact, it can be a breeze. You don't even have to worry about your report because PlexTrack can handle it for you. If you aren't familiar, PlexTrack is the premier cybersecurity reporting and collaboration platform that makes penetration testers, red teamers, and cybersecurity teams more efficient, effective, and proactive. PlexTrack removes the pain of reporting and lets you collaborate between both red and blue teams for effective purple teaming and faster remediation. The PlexTrack platform lets you easily aggregate findings, pull in reusable content from write-up databases and content libraries, and track and measure engagement progress in real time. Import assets from CSV files or Nmap or Nessus and so many others of your favorite tools. With over 25 integrations, you can streamline your reporting and collaboration process right into your existing workflow. You can do even faster testing with PlexTrack runbooks and show the impact to managers and leadership with PlexTrack's analytics and visualizations. Within minutes, you can have your pen test report done and dusted, all with your team's logo and details, and then sent off to the client. Spend more time hacking and less time reporting. Learn how you can boost your team's efficiency by 30% and cut reporting time by up to 65% with PlexTrack. Seriously, check out PlexTrack. I have great colleagues and peers that use PlexTrack every day for reporting. Get started with my link below in the video description and let you and your team get back to hacking. 
Huge thanks to PlexTrack for sponsoring this video. Now it's worth noting here, if you're trying to be that threat actor, you put your hacker hat on and your play pretend bad person, then you probably want to still try to blend in. That's the whole point of you using this living off the land technique. So what I've done is created a sort of a typo squatting domain, hey lookalike domain, where I created like a live.sysinternals.com, like you might actually pull down the sysinternals utilities, but I've just simply merely replaced, hey, the lowercase i at the very first i in the word Sys internals to a L because that way, if you actually had this in capital letters, right, even from the command line, like if you were trying to do PowerShell, invoke web request, download, whatever, uh, PowerShell doesn't care about your casing and nor does your web browser. If you actually have this in the web browser link, like I can just go to internals capital L for live, capital S for Sys internals and the L, the lowercase L for my I will still look sort of kind of like an I. So maybe a, 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 a short, small, stupid trick to fool and potentially slip past, fly under the radar for anything that we want to actually use here. I just staged this live sysinternals.com as a fake phishing domain thing. I figured that could make for some fun social engineering. Now, every single link here, all of the executables, whether or not it's a DLL, even the text file, CHM, sys, whatever, they all are calculator. They're all the calculator application just for the simple proof of concept. And so I have my custom manifest.yml file with the values configured for just a simple test installer to play with Winget here, uh, an executable that we want to download and install x64 architecture from my live sysinternals.com procmon executable. You will need the SHA-256 hash. You would need a little bit of a, a checksum for the application that you're trying to download and install or execute really. And that's A-OK. -okay. We can just slap that in because we know what we want to be pulling down. And then let me see, I'm going to have uh, the logs cleared out here because I want to be able to track and see, hey, what log output is there once I execute this thing. We'll have Process Explorer open up on the left-hand side to see things work. And now, can I try to use Winget to install tactacmanifest.manifest.yml? Let's see. Found the test, pulling it down, executes it. Procmon.exe popped open, <laughs> and there's our stupid, dumb calculator application. Now, okay, look, that's our Lulbin in a small, simple, proof of concept, innocent way, but what do we have for logs, and what did we actually see pop open in Process Explorer? Uh, we could take a look back at some of the other research and articles that we've seen out on the internet, but we can also just look back in at our logs to see what's going on, where, how, and when. There's our invocation, could clue us into the actual path of the manifest file, and then we can also see everything that it's using for some of the temporary installations. Maybe we could retrieve those files if you were to still see them after the fact. And you could see, the, of course, the URL that I actually tried to pull from my live sysinternals.com procmon.exe. Interesting chatter about the message of the wild or mark of the web. Sorry, I don't know why I got the Legend of Zelda uh, Breath of the Wild in there. <laughs> and some things to note that it does actually keep track of these in an installed database. Uh, we can see that chat about in some of the other articles that we'll read up on, but I do want to at least kind of give that info to you. All the SQL statements and a ton of them because we've just turned on verbose logging is included in here. Like this log file is now massive for everything that it's done, but you've at least now got the insight as to what file tried to be received, where it got put, and actually like named after the test installer package that you want to grab. All that is present and accessible for you in these log files. This is, you should be the source of truth if you're trying to hunt this down. Last couple of things that I do want to mention, hey, these other articles, they do in fact note, again, hey, the executable that is ran here, that it is going to be named after the package that you define within your manifest file. And they discuss, look, why is this mostly useless? And it's really just kind of a cutesy novelty. Again, you need admin rights to be able to play with this, but in some cases you probably already have that and you just want to blend in and lurk here. Maybe the local manifest file is also a speed bump. Smart screen could get in the way. It could be really anything, but I just thought it would be worthwhile to put on your radar. If you're playing from the blue team, purple team, defensive uh, perspective here, DFIR, digital forensics and instant response, you can still be tracking this down again with the log files that we got to play with and all kudos and credit to Nasbench who got to do some recent research on this and he was sharing it out on the Twitterverse. I was tracking and I thought that would be really good and worthwhile to bring to your attention. There are some other rumblings in though, like look, if you tried to modify or tamper with the actual sources, like where it 
might naturally install from rather than a local manifest file. You could do that, but uh, that probably also needs admin rights. Package installers also have their own individual logs in the exact same folder and directory that we were just in. So you could see everything that was done there. And if you want to do any changes with GPO to actually force these local manifest file settings, you can do that just as well. Nasbench mentions and discusses the install.db SQLite database that we saw included in reference within our logs. He didn't get a whole lot of time to dig into it. So if anything, maybe I leave that as a call to action for you. If there's anything you might be interested in this sort of approach and playing with Winget. There are, of course, plenty of example YAML files if you wanted to tinker, uh, and maybe you'll find some other cool, sweet stuff just as well. So there you have it, yet another living off the land technique. Maybe worthwhile, maybe cutesy, maybe novel, I don't know. Your mileage may vary, but I thought, hey, it's kind of a neat and interesting one. Wanted to put it on your radar, and when gets, like it looks pretty cool. It looks pretty legitimate. It looks pretty, uh, I don't know, real for a developer workstation, for an engineer employee. It could be anything. Uh, it might still be something that could blend in for natural operations on a Windows operating system. And if you're using a type of squatted domain like <coughs> sys internals, maybe there's some damage to be done. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. And hey, check out our sponsor, PlexTrack, always doing awesome stuff in the penetration testing, purple teaming scene. And you know the drill. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you in the next video.